Hey y'all, this is TCA Gaming, and in this video, I am going to go over some eBay consignments. I'm also going to show you guys uh, the highlights from a CGC return that I recently got in. And I may touch on the PSA acquiring the eBay vault. Um, I'm probably not going to touch on the golden section of it too much, but uh, the eBay PSA vault, I believe, is more applicable to a lot of the people who deal in this hobby. Golden, maybe, you know, with Pokemon a little bit, but, you know, they don't do a ton of stuff. But... <clears throat> I have some more sealed products in. I'm going to show these first. Uh, if you're looking at the World Championship deck that's shown on eBay, I do state that it has a sticker stain, and then it's actually like busted right there in the corner. You can kind of see it right there. Check out how sun faded this thing is. It's like, man, let me pull it up just a little bit. But look at that. That thing was, it was sitting in some sunlight for a long time. Or actually, I don't even know how long it takes to do this. Maybe it was just a year. I mean, I really don't know. Maybe someone in the comments could uh, let me know about that one. Got some cool Yu-Gi-Oh stuff too, but let me get out of these. We've got a light theme deck. We have EX Emerald. We've actually got two theme decks for the EX Emerald, and we also have both of the Dragon Frontiers. Kind of similar to what we've seen recently. I've seen a couple of those. And then I had, I had not sold this before. This wouldn't have been an item I would have took individually, but they sent in a bunch of other stuff. And you can kind of see it's got a couple rips right there. But check out these Yu-Gi-Oh boxes. We got a, an original LOB. This is for the U.S. and Canada. English edition, if my memory's right, this is just regular LOB. But everything checked out that I could see on it. I'm not like an expert on Yu-Gi-Oh seal product, but nothing seemed to be off compared to the LOB box that I had. There was an Enemy of Justice. Then we have a Tactical Evolution. I don't know too much about those boxes, but um, from what I could find online, they, they look good. I'm willing to take the chance and sell it myself. I haven't had any issues from this guy. Also got a few more games. Mass Effect, Xbox 360. And then what else do we have here? Gran Turismo, the real driving simulator. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I. I played Gran Turismo when I was a kid, but I was more Gran Turismo 1 and 2. I think 3, maybe a little bit, but you know, not, not too much there. And what do we have? Got this on consignment. This is a starter deck Kaiba, Blue Eyes, White Dragon, and a 10. The Magician of Black Chaos from the Premium Pack. Got a couple Pokemon cards here. Got a Staff Kyogre. Got a Chum Lee Collection Deoxys. Got an Azelf Level X and a 9. Then there's a Staff Kyogre on the, um, the CGC side. And then I, I bought this one. This is uh, that card that I bought from PWCC where they had to charge 3% to fulfill it before they shipped it from the same location, which, I mean, it's just crazy. So I, I don't know if it actually was ingested into the PWCC vault and then it was pulled out. They probably just shipped it directly from, you know, wherever it was <laughs> already. And I just got hit with the 3%. But that that t that experience still left a bad taste in my mouth but you know maybe I'll, I'll click a little slower all right this is my cgc submission and i do have more ps or not psa returns uh more cards to show for consignment i'm just kind of grabbing stuff out of the box here but um i sent in two sealed well two sets of southern islands that come from sealed packs so it was uh, 36 cards and uh, these were the highlights and then i also sent in some uh best of game cards that I pulled out the uh, that I had busted from seal packs but these were the only pristines that I received and these were the non hollows and then I did receive pristines of dark venusaur that's the winner got a dark ivysaur there's the winner for the dark ivysaur I did have several of the regular tens on these so you can find those in uh, my eBay they are already listed there's both for the rocket sneasel some of these only had one of so if you don't see a pristine rocket sneasel it's because there was only one in the submission I kept the best for myself uh, this is rocket scissors since I pulled out the gym at 10 means I had zero pristines uh, the winner did have a pristine there's dark venusaur that's the uh, non winner what we got here now this was nice I think this was the only hollow that I got in a pristine oh yeah this was interesting too so uh, I'd sent them all in sealed, or I had them from sealed packs, and I didn't really check them that great because check these out. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's like a ribbed crimp thing going across the middle there, and they actually marked it, you know, questionable authenticity. 
and you can see like where they circled it they showed where the damage was or whatever and so there's three of them from that pack and here's one that was graded but if you look at it let's see if i can catch it with the light there we go so look right in here you can kind of see where this one has that same those same marks but for some reason they graded this one it wasn't marked an error they didn't mark it as damage they just graded it in eight so I'm not sure why this one was graded and these were marked questionable authenticity and I didn't check the other four winners which I probably should because I I could tell these are getting lighter so like this is probably the lightest one right here so I imagine the other four probably didn't show it I, I honestly I don't know how that would happen so I kind of get why they wouldn't grade them but then you know why they grade this one you know maybe you just didn't see it because it was so so light but um, yeah I, I put them in my collection there I've never seen that kind of uh, crimp across the middle where it wasn't like profound. So I've seen cards before, like even a Japanese card. I saw a Japanese one that was crimped down the middle. I believe it was a Hypno. It had like the full pack crimp, you know, something like this. So it looked pretty cool. It was like all these little squares down it. And um, I've seen a crimp go across the middle of the card before, but it's the full, you know, right there, like that full length. That almost looked like little dots, like it was just a piece of it. So again i don't know how that would happen but i mean i don't think it was i don't think it's fake i don't think it was fake but all right so moving on personal collection stuff there so we have some Yu-Gi-Oh cards man that glare from bgs really doesn't you can't see much here so i'll just say it this is an ultimate rare arm dragon level seven eight five this is a black skull dragon nine five gem at bgs this first edition metal raider same thing with the change of heart got a cyber twin dragon Ultimate Rare, First Edition. All these cards are like really popular. Got a DDS Exodia. Here we have an LOB, First Edition Lodi, uh, Exodia in a, in a 9. Got the Garma Sword. That's from uh, Premium. No, the Tournament tournament Pack 8. And it's in a Mint 9. There's Left Leg of the Forbidden One. Got Monster Reborn. All these are like original English First Edition. This one, for some reason, was like sealed in sideways. <laughs> so it's, it's not the camera or you. If you're looking at it on the listing or whatever, it is kind of like tilted. Oh yeah, there's uh, one more there. Got the Trihorn Dragon, first edition. I used to love that card right there. Uh, bought these. We have Gate Guardian and Mothman. I got these off of STF Gaming. Uh, I think I picked this one up for about 1100 bucks. This one definitely has a lot more damage than I thought it did. There's uh, the, the eBay Vault pictures did not do it justice, but there's like wear on all four corners. I don't know how it got the 10. Uh, here we have this Michael Waddell signed uh, Holographic Mothman. I had recently picked one of these up, if you guys remember. I think I paid 500 bucks for the Hollow Kickstarter. And then uh, this one is signed, and then the auto is graded a 10 as well. So... Uh, actually, I won this for like 370 bucks, so this was cheaper than that other one. And I figured that the signature, if nothing else, I mean, it's gonna add at least a little bit of value. It's not gonna, it's not gonna make the card go down. At least I wouldn't think it would. Not being graded a 10, it's a double 10, right? And then we have some PSA cards right here. We have the Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. If you guys remember this, it, we first saw it, I believe, in the movie promos, or maybe it wasn't the first time. I, I'm not exact. Well, yeah, I think it was like 2000. Was that 2004? Yeah, so if this is 2009, um, I think that was the first version when it came out in, in that movie pack. But anyways, uh, this one right here is way more expensive. This is from the Retro Pack. I believe this one's over a $1,000 card. I, I could be wrong. It's been a while. Uh, here, here we have some first edition Ultimate Rares. It's got the Elemental Hero Dark Neos. Got Dark Bright. Got Wild Wingman. Got Exodia's Forbidden One in a nine. That's first edition LOB. Got Luminous Soldier in a nine from Tournament Pack. Here we have an Ultimate Rare Max C, which from what I can see, this one right here is hard to find in a top grade. Did not get the 10, but you know, it's pretty up there with the nine. Got the Magical Stone Excavation, and this is a PSA 10, right leg of the Forbidden One, LOB first edition. This is the glossy, uh, it's not wavy. And we have System Down, Ultimate Rare first edition, and then we're gonna finish off with a Victory Dragon, also from that Retro Pack number two. So a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh stuff and um, pretty decent Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. It's kind of cool to see. But anyways, just to touch on uh, what I was talking about earlier with the uh, eBay vault, uh, if you guys don't know, PSA is going to acquire that and um, they put out their terms and conditions and their rates and all that kind of stuff. I do have a, a specific contract for the items that I admitted before it was ever released to the public because that was kind of like a, a courtesy that I did for eBay. So that stuff is under technically under like a different type of contract, but it has been very frustrating, you know, uh, trying to get that stuff upheld. 
Uh, so I'm not exactly too happy even with um, the, the special contract for those items. But for new items, um, you know, mine would fall under the normal contract that everyone else has. I don't have any special rates, fees, anything like that. But, you know, right now it's still free, right? They don't charge, you know, buyer or seller. But looks like I'm getting a call. So let me just make sure. And there we go. I pulled it off. But anyways, um, what I was talking about there was when... Uh, when it's saying PSA is buying out the eBay vault, they put in their terms and conditions. I don't know if you guys went through there and read through all that stuff, but a lot of it was kind of frustrating to read where right now it's already hard to get the title uh, taken care of, but you know, there are ways that you can get the title maneuvered around. Um, in PSA's terms, they said it's like absolute final. You can't change it. Uh, there's things like where they're carrying over. It's only available to people in the United States. You have to have a U.S. registered account and a U.S. delivery address. So, like, even if you live somewhere else, a lot of things um, on eBay, you can still have it shipped to, say, you know, ship my card or PWCC or, you know, wherever, like, or a U.S. middleman. But you actually have to have a U.S. registered account for the eBay vault and you have or for the eBay vault. And then you have to ship it to a U.S. address. <clears throat> and on top of that, it can't even be a P.O. box, which is like the majority of what people want to use for like submissions and things like that. I mean, think of PSA. I mean, if you send to USPS, it's going to a P.O. box. That's where I have all my stuff sent to because for me, it's the most secure. I can trust uh, anytime I want something sent to the post office, even if it's FedEx or um, UPS, it's going to deliver there. They can sign for it. It's, it's held secure until I come and get it. And um, like USPS won't even deliver to my home. So like, I don't know sometimes, you know, what service sellers are using. Um, and so I always default to the USPS address. It's that way with eBay vault. If you've ever had anything shipped uh, through the eBay vault, uh, they do not tell you what service that they're going to use, but it is FedEx. So th that, that, that is good that they actually block, you know, PO boxes and don't use USPS. So there are some people who block uh, PO boxes but then they ship through usps and it's like that doesn't make any sense at all like why would you block the post office deliveries uh, when you're requiring that the shipment go through usps uh, so for me like if i have anything shipped through usps if i have it sent to my residential uh, residential address when it gets to the local hub they just reject it they send it back because uh, technically they do not deliver here and for like express packages they are required to show that it's going to deliver or that they attempted a delivery, they'll scan it in at the post office, say they attempted to deliver it, and then they'll reject it. I've lost a few packages that way. And for whatever reason, if it's my wife's packages, a lot of times they'll forward it along to the other post office, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if it's mine or TCA Gamer, they see this a business or something like that, they'll just reject it. And uh, that's very frustrating because it shows like they attempted a delivery when they never did. It never left the local post office and it's sent back. And for that reason, I actually use the post office in Hildebrand, which isn't the same city that I technically live in. And uh, we know all them. We trust them. And I like that. I, I like the fact that, you know, anytime there's an issue, like I can call them up, I can ask them, you know, what's going on. They can look into information. I know the postmaster's number. And, you know, that's something that is really hard to get with both FedEx and UPS as well. And the rates are vastly different. I do like UPS for certain things, but they have a big problem with theft. People going into packages, you need to package stuff particular ways otherwise um, they will go and there are some places that will go in packages and they like to cover up a lot of stuff and this is being spoken uh, not for me as an experienced UPS employee but one that's a person who's had this stuff happen to him and I spoke to several different branches at UPS and apparently it is a pretty big issue that they have going on and at FedEx I don't like FedEx really at all the, they can be quick and they can be cheap for certain services but for the most part they are um, they're no faster than UPS and they're pretty expensive and they charge all kinds of random stuff and I'm, I'm in a dispute now with a lot of FedEx charges and where they're trying to charge me for things that I never authorized. I'm like, nope, just shut my account down. I don't want to pay for this. And they still call me, you know, and I've, I've tried disputing all these different uh, charges, but they're like, no, you know, it was going to your address. I'm like, well, I didn't pay. I didn't buy that label. You know, this is where somebody sent something to me. If they didn't pay for the postage, then you should have told me and I would have never taken the package if I had to pay for more postage. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I could just pay the 30 bucks or whatever it is. Um, but it's like, I don't feel that it's right that they can charge me for postage for where I have. I've never went to a FedEx location and physically bought postage, at least that I can remember. Maybe I did in college, but definitely not in the past few years. So uh, if somebody sent something to me, 
then they should be responsible for that postage from getting it from them to me. And then if it arrives at my it arrives in my hands and I to accept the package, I should be informed of any charges before that they can just say, hey, you owe this amount of money for whatever reason. And uh, it, it's one of those things where, you know, all this links back to, you know, the eBay vault for over two years. You know, we've had this issue where they've they've known that shipping outside the United States is a must and they have not fixed it. Now they're pawning it off on PSA. And the only way I think this is going to uh, incorporate buyers and sellers outside of the United States is if they just say, hey, we'll incorporate you into our eBay International Standard Delivery Program, which is fine. But at the same time, any bugs that might be in the system, they're not going to be tested. There's so many bugs with the eBay vault. Like, I, I, I don't like the fact that, you know, when these issues come up, they just, they don't solve them. They don't fix them. And for that reason, you know, I, I don't think that I want to uh, participate in the PSA vault, you know, that's through the eBay vault or you know, whatever they're going to call it. Uh, I have all of my products still technically in the vault just sitting there but i am highly considering pulling it out i did have somebody from the psa team reach out to me they want to discuss things but after reading through the terms and conditions i screenshotted probably a dozen different parts of their terms and conditions that i just had problems with you know when i put my items into the ebay vault you know i made them cross out that stuff about forces majeure you know where it was like unforeseen circumstances we're not going to cover your products well, you know that's back in that new um the terms and conditions you know if there's something that happens with forces major where it's an unforeseen circumstance that's out of the hand control of eBay or whoever's in control of the vault, then that is not covered by insurance. It's like, what do you mean? Like, that's what insurance is for. It's supposed to cover all of the unforeseen circumstances. Like, you guys have possession of it, and if something happens to it, then we should be compensated, you know, whoever the owner is of those items. And even some of that was a little bit iffy. It was like, to determine value, then it's going to be, uh, the lower of the two values for recent sales that you know through eBay or um, you know what the what the most recent sale was you know to acquire the product and <clears throat> you know that could that could be really strange because you know a lot of the items that I put into eBay eBay vault technically I bought for ninety nine cent because it was a test listing and then I had it shipped in you know and I I don't think you know, I wouldn't put it past you know big companies to use little you know, loopholes to get out of things. And there were even certain, certain circumstances in the terms and conditions that stated that they would not even cover specific withdrawals, you know, from the, from the vault. And like, it was, a, some of it was really like a, a broad gray area. And to me, that just, it's concerning. It, it's concerning with, with that kind of stuff. I don't like contracts and legal legalities as it is. Um, I try to uphold people to their word and most uh, most of the time that doesn't work. I mean, I got into some big issues with the solar panels because you know people were telling me different things over the phone, and uh, you know when it come around to it, you know they want to charge extra. And to me, that's a big thing. You know, being accountable for your word. And one thing about it going from eBay to PSA is, you know, I was dealing with people at eBay, and if I had an issue with something, I'd be like, hey, I can. You know, in this email, you told me that this was going to be covered. I wouldn't have to pay withdrawal fees. Can I get this? You know, can I can I have the money back? You know, for the withdrawal fees, and you know, they go through the process. Yeah, we'll honor that. But is that going to carry over to a whole other company that they bought it out? And I don't know. To me, there's a lot of things that need to be clarified. And if I did ever use the vault, I would want to make sure that a lot of these issues are fixed, especially with like the titles and the bugs the payment issues, the payment processing issues, like they would, you can't even uh, pay with certain PayPal cards at, at times. And the only way you can pay with certain MasterCards or Visas, you know, that it's like site-wide issues. And, you know, who's going to take care of the sale, you know, if the buyer can't pay because you won't take care of the problem. And then, of course, the biggest one, which I've, I've stressed to them every single time that I've talked with them about the eBay vault is get it open to people outside the United States. Like you have your own international shipping hubs. There is no reason whatsoever that we can't have people at least buy products from the eBay vault and have it shipped to them. You know, you know, I had someone bring up to me that maybe they don't want to allow people to have an eBay vault to, to store cards in that vault because it'd be like some kind of international, like you could be hiding funds or something in there. It's like, I mean, there's, there has to be ways around, you know, being able to record all of this correctly and in the proper ways. I mean, you, your eBay, I mean, 
anybody can ship internationally with almost any company. Like, why can't this be a thing with you know these high-end collectibles on eBay? You know, you would think that with this billion-dollar company, they would have that figured out, or they would have figured it out. You know, even if they didn't do it in the very beginning, they're doing like you know the beta testing and that stuff. They would have done it, you know, in the next six months or the next year. You know, now we're working on two years. You know, when this idea first was pitched over two years ago, and I was asked to ingest products, and I was like. This is the big issue. You know, I have issues with being able to control my title and I want to make sure that if it ever does go to auction or I want to sell it, that everybody, including people outside of the United States, has exposure to that. Otherwise, you're limiting your market and I'd just rather be selling it myself. Now, the fee increase, I also I almost don't care about that. Like, I get it. There needs to be some kind of fees charged. It incentivizes both sides. Um, it is a significant increase, but... It's also the reason why I have never really changed my consignment model. Uh, and when I charge a very high percent compared to most everyone else, I charge 20%. I don't use the eBay vault itself, but if something seems kind of crazy, you know, it's probably going to change. But for me, you know, I charge a 20% flat. That leaves me a marginal amount that I can make off of the top anytime I sell somebody's item, like these items here that I'm selling. You know, if you went with Z and G, I'm I picked one of the only cards that I'm probably not going to be selling. Um, if you went with Z and G, Dan, or even STF Gaming, you know you'd probably get a similar price and you would clear uh, a much higher amount. And if you went through the vault, you could potentially clear a whole lot more. But you know, it kind of to me, you know, I, I saw this percentage change. Like, man, that kind of throws a wrench in these guys that have been advertising five, four, three, down to one percent, you know, consignments because they're going to. The, the PSA vaults can be charging a lot higher than that if they're the ones that who are actually fulfilling it. But it is pretty cool that they are taking under the 250. I do not think that they are ready to scale in any way, in any capacity to that point yet, especially with none of these other issues addressed or taken care of. I believe that there are some major things that will go wrong if they get a flood of cards coming in at that tier value under the $250 at that at that percentage, um, it is higher than some other consignments, but if they take care of literally everything, man, if I knew that it was a streamlined process, I might send in everything. Like if I could just drop off a pallet and have all of my PSA graded cards in there and they take care of everything, and I just get a check every week. Yeah. I mean, that would be wonderful, but I already know the titles are going to be terrible. I'm going to have to ask them to take better pictures again in, in this whole thing with the, the international buyers. I mean, I guess I could, figure all that out just put in buy nows and let it sit but the combined shipping is already terrible with eis you know you have buyers that they'll send me screenshots be like hey i want to offer you 50 dollars for this card that you have listed at 59 and some change because i have to pay import fees and i have to pay shipping and your combined shipping rates aren't that great and i go and look at the listing if you're in the united states you're paying 49.99 free shipping but if you go through eis or you're outside because i, I only have eis in, um enabled, which is the eBay international standard delivery, it actually jacked their price up from conversion to almost $60. Then they're charged imports. And then on top of that, they have to pay the shipping cost. And if they add anything else to their cart, the combined shipping rate that EIS offers is nearly negligible. It's almost nothing. And then sometimes when you get the product sent to you, they didn't do the paperwork correctly and the buyer has to pay customs again. So it is very, very frustrating for me as a seller. If once I sell it, I mean, it is like, I mean, it is great because I don't have to worry about anything. Any of those issues, I still try to help out the buyer, but it sucks because I can't do anything either. Like I can see uh, when someone goes through EIS that if that it doesn't deliver, like their products is probably going to be destroyed. I just recently had someone who ordered three PSA 10 cards that were reverse hollows from the, the, or the e-reader era. And uh, they had it delivered, and for some reason their parents weren't there or whatever, and it ended up getting returned. And they reached out to me, they opened up return requests. But, you know, I was fully covered because it went through EIS. So as a seller, it's great. I don't have anything to worry about. My funds are taken care of. But those cards, I was I was like, I, I'm not going to get them back. They're going to go the, the, to the hub. Like, you have to reach out to eBay. And I actually, I tried reaching out to eBay on their behalf, and you know what they told me? They said, yeah, there's really nothing that we can do. Usually when that stuff gets sent back to the hub, we don't reach out to that buyer again. We're not going to pay for uh, to have it shipped out a second time. We just will simply destroy the product. They're just going to destroy it. Like, there's no attempt to have it sent out again. You know what, you know what would happen if that was you and – 
you sent something to somebody here in America or you sent something through USPS to another country and it got returned to you, eBay is going to force you to give some kind of refund. They don't cover you the same way that they cover themselves. They take care of themselves a whole lot more. And because you use their service and they don't want to have, to, they say that they're going to cover it, you're taken care of. Like, it's it really is like almost like a double standard. I guess maybe when you're shipping it out, they don't know for sure. And when, if it went through them, they know for sure that the product was sent out. I, I don't know. It. I wanted to intervene so much for that buyer, but I, there was literally nothing that I could do. I, I talked to that eBay representative till I was blue and I was just told you're covered. You've already won these cases. I filed for you to get your money. But the thing is, like when they come back to the hub, like I'm not going to have access to them. Nobody really is. They're just going to destroy the product. And so I, I told the guys like, just reach out to eBay. Maybe they'll give you a courtesy refund. You know, sometimes they do that. You know, if this is not a recurring instance and you know, it, you would have a case, you call them up like, Hey, it, it just didn't deliver. I didn't get my product. You know, I'll pay for shipping again. Can, can that happen? You know, you start saying stuff like that. Then I think that they would be open to uh, giving you a courtesy refund, but if they see a, a habit of it, then of course, you know, I don't think they're going to continue to grant those, but that's, that's pretty way off base from the actual vault and their experiences. But the reason I brought up EIS is because that is probably the only way I believe PSA is going to incorporate allowing people outside of the United States to buy and sell from the vault. Uh, they're probably going to adapt the EIS and I don't even know if this stuff is being listed on your own account anymore. Like, is it going to be listed through some PSA account? Like, if you have stuff in the PSA vault, are you going to have access to list it on your eBay? And then since it's not eBay anymore and they're not in control of the titles, can you change the titles? Because from what that contract said or from the terms and conditions uh, that were placed forth, uh, placed forth for when it changes over to PSA in the, the PSA vault, it said that you cannot change the titles and it's final. And I don't like that. I mean, I, I want my own title. I, I, don't, I don't want my Pokemon card titled like a sports card with the year and you know, all this random stuff that you don't need in there. TCG, you know, games, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, just look at the original Pokemon cards. That's about how it would come out as a title. And um, I, I feel like that you lose some control there. And, and then when you get mad or... You know, like me, you get a little disgruntled, act like an old man, and you start shaking your cane. Like, all right, well, just give me all my cards back. You know, what are they going to charge you to get your cards back? How long is it going to take? What happens if stuff does get damaged or lost in transit while being withdrawn from the vault? Because, like I said, I read something in there in one of those terms and conditions that where it was talking about, like, they may not even cover that. There, there's certain things that they won't cover. And it looks like I might have deleted a lot of those screenshots. Yeah, I mean, see, I've got, I've got all these little screenshots on here. Yeah, a applicability of eBay's money back guarantee, final sale, and items lost in da or damaged in transit. Please note that all items in the vault are final sale. If a listing shows, this, if you pay through, let's see if I can find it. Withdrawal of an item you have stored in the vault is not covered by eBay money back guarantee. However, if your item from the vault to you is lost or damaged in transit, please contact us. Like, what does that mean? Like, it should be covered in the insurance. There shouldn't be any contact or whatever. So I don't know. There was some things in here that maybe I didn't understand as well as I should because, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't read, read or speak lawyer very well. But some of it was very, very simply put, like the, the titles and the, the U.S. stuff. So, you know, I told you guys I was only going to talk about this a little bit. But once I get started, sometimes I start to ramble and rant. But um, so if you stuck around for all of this, uh, I'm, I'm sure that you're you're kind of invested. You're, you're wanting to look and see if this is something you can use. With all that said, you know, it may, it still could be potentially a really good thing for the future, but I just, I think it's too soon. Like, I don't know when this transition is supposed to happen, but opening it up to all those low end items when right now, even the high end items with the sellers that are on there, um, there's just so many bugs and issues that, I mean, I have an item that's literally sitting in the vault that I can't sell because the PSA cert was deactivated by PSA, the same people who authenticated this card before it went into the eBay vault. So it was authenticated by PSA when it was graded. I bought it. I sent it. I gave it to eBay, which they verified everything. Then they sent it through PSA authentication 
it was authenticated then and then it went into the ebay vault where i listed it for sale and then it got removed because psa deactivated the certification number and so i asked them like okay where's the how does the the guarantee work there how does the authenticity guarantee work there because it's already been authenticated while it's in your possession by psa and you know it's in the vault and that's the only place it's been since that's happened and basically i was told you need to withdraw it so have it shipped back to you then pay to have it shipped to psa have them re-authenticate it they ship it back to you then you take it you resubmit it to the ebay vault but before it goes into the ebay vault it will be submitted through psa and PSA will authenticate it. Then it will be sent back to the eBay vault where now it'll be available with a new cert number or whatever you want to call it to be able to be sold. Like, why does that all have to be a process? Like, it's in the eBay vault. It was certified by PSA. Like, it was authenticated by them. Like, if they're going to own this vault now, can they just recert or like give a new certification number for that card and then you know make it available like, you know, that could be a good thing right you know maybe you know they'll take care of that little loophole situation i even have cards now that i can't uh well i can technically list but when i list them on ebay like it allows me to edit all the fields and as soon as i send it live it shows that it's in my inventory instead of in the vaults so, i mean you have all these different things that are just issues and glitches and that's not even incorporating all the and the problems with it's not like your bulk editing or your seller hub like your ebay vault is just like this page where you can search by a few different things and even when you search by more than you know one or two terms like it, it just like i guess it explodes <laughs> it's just like hey you don't have any of these items like if you put in psa 10 charizard instead of just charizard you might not have anything that shows up as in your vault even though you have several psa 10 charizards where if you just put psa 10 you'll pull up all the psa 10 items or if you just put charizard it'll pull up all the charizards but you can't narrow down that search to just psa 10 charizards and you know maybe that's something they've worked on i haven't done that in a little while but that was a, a big issue like I, I couldn't sort i couldn't sort it out i couldn't bulk list you couldn't bulk edit everything has to be individually done um, even if you have like certain issues you know with scheduling the listings and that kind of stuff like it, it it's all like it all needs to be worked on before somebody else buys it out unless they're going to have access to work on that system like i don't understand why you would open it up to 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 all of these different items and to have it most likely i imagine they're going to be putting it on their website so anybody who submits a submits through psa is going to have the option to sell through the psa vault i mean has anybody ever here submitted went through the psa submission process and did like two really close submissions and seeing how how much the number in your submission like changed <laughs> like you go from one bulk submission to another bulk submission where <clears throat> you may have only took five minutes to do those two different submissions but i mean there's like a thousand different submissions that look like were submitted between your first one and your second one i mean think if just 10 percent of those people want to have their stuff just directly sold through the psa vault i mean that's a lot of volume there's a lot of stuff going in and out and i think it's just going to overwhelm them i i Maybe I am drastically, drastically underestimating PSA and their capabilities of making this work right off the bat. But I think even Jim Mint made a post about it in his stories where he was saying like he does not think that they just have the infrastructure right now to, to implement all of this at once. And I'm in agreement. Like I think that there are a lot of issues and bugs that need to be fixed, need to be addressed. And this for two years, eBay has not been able to take care of them. Like, why are we thinking that P PSA is going to be able to take care of them when they're, this isn't even their system? Like, they were just buying eBay's system and incorporating it. Maybe they were more involved than I thought. I mean, again, I'm making a lot of assumptions here. And like I said, I know that I'm rambling on and on about this. But it's just very frustrating because this could be you know, such a top-tier you know, service that is offered. But there are so many things that could go wrong as well. And I... I I just don't think I want to risk my collection while it's all being figured out. You know, I've already had ran into so many issues as it is and lost a lot, a lot of money because I couldn't sell a lot of cards for a while. All right. Before I ramble on into another topic, you know, because I start talking and, you know, something else comes up, I'm going to call it there. And, uh, guys, if you, if you stuck around till now, I mean, you're definitely a champ. I, I probably wouldn't have listened to me this long and I hope you guys have a great weekend.